especially for heavy metal. Like for acoustic stuff, I don't think you need anything more than a, a BR 1200 and just really, really, really good state, uh, really good recording mics. You know what I mean? But for um, metal, the problem is that you're dealing with a lot of low end, and you, you got to be able to take that low end out of there to clear it up. And yet still have a massive sound without thinning it out too much. And that's some of the areas where, like the mastering, you can master and you can do all that stuff on the BR-1200. There's no problem there. But it does have its limitations, right? So if it's so great, you know, uh, like it, it does everything a professional studio can do. But it just, it's, it's good, even to the point of almost excellent in some areas. But it's also limited, uh, you know, by its age and stuff like that. So anybody that thinks it's not a good system, uh, trust me, if you have that and you, you spend some time learning how to use it, right, you won't need to go and buy an audio interface and all this stuff. Now, mind you, it might be easier to work with. I don't know. I, I think knobs and dials are easier to work with than menus. But, you know, it's, you know, every tomato, tomato there. But, yeah, the uh, BR-1200 is an excellent machine. So why did I even make that video of why you should never uh, start a home recording uh, studio or whatever? Well, it was so that you, you would, like, when I saw the BR-1200 and saw what it could do and everything like that, I knew it had a lot of potential for the home recordist, right? And that's why I bought it. Now there's a... Uh, Tascam, I think, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I think it's Tascam still makes a version similar to that um how good is it is it worth upgrading to well in my case it might be in a long in the long term uh, because it can you know you can run it off a laptop uh, you know if you want, you want to see the menu better or whatever but you still have that console there and you can get a 32 channel <laughs> you know which would just make life a lot easier than using virtual tracks right um so depending on how old the technology is like when did these things come out if they came out 10 years ago and the stores are still trying to sell them you know maybe you want to look at something newer but the idea of you know if you had to travel with it the br1200 could fit in a good size suitcase you know you could do live shows you can do there's a lot of great things you could do with it you know so yeah bang for the buck <clears throat> you know it's one unit <laughs> you know what i mean it's one unit really you only need a patch cord in your instrument that's it you know what i mean uh, unless you're doing like the vocals and drums and what have you but you get the idea like it, it is a great machine for what it is uh i'm still learning it you know like uh every time you know and that, that, that's like in that video that i was making that was one of the points i was making is that you have to understand just because you buy the equipment doesn't mean you're going to be producing great things if you don't have the uh, you know the time on it to figure how to get the best out of it and every time i do a mix i'm hearing things like at first everything you think you do is great oh this sounds awesome this sounds awesome then you start hearing for example vocals i'm having the hardest time with the vocals but a lot of that could be the room and the mics i'm using I'm using an sm58 for the vocals sm57 for everything else the nice thing about the sm57 it's nice and quiet it's really really quiet but it's not really good for vocals the sm58 is okay for vocals but you have the limitations of the pss, 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 you know you can hear all the the uh, principles principles however you say it uh, you know all, all the all the stuff that peaks the mics and so i need a better quality uh, recording mic which you know after doing quite a bit of research i you know i've come down to the uh i think it's the dv7 sure uh metal vocal guy it's, it's in every studio it, it's you know and it's a good mic like it's a good mic it's about four to six hundred bucks depending on the variant you get um and that'd be a good vocal vocal mic and uh, you know so stuff like that does help out a lot uh vocal treatment you know on in front of an sm58 if that's all you can afford just get it you know grab a nylon a piece of pantyhose or something you know on a coat hanger just make a you know just make a little uh what's called uh uh, that little shield for the microphone so you're not peeking, you know, hitting hard pressure waves against the mic uh, so you can get cleaner vocals. So all that stuff takes time to figure out what's what. Uh, mic and guitar cabinets, I, that's pretty easy. You just move the mic around. If you've got two guys, you can just keep the guy moving the mic until you hear the sound you want to hear. 
right? Drums kind of the same, just moving the mics around to you. Uh, but vocals, there's a, there's a lot. I think there's a little. It's a little bit tougher getting really good vocals. Um, so that again, you know, once you got the recording equipment, then it's where are you recording? You know, like to build a recording booth and all that stuff. Like I say, by the the money you would put into it, and I see video after video of guys that got like fifty thousand, eighty thousand, hundred thousand dollars in their studios, telling you that this two hundred dollar item is going to get you this great sound, and I'm like. And it's not about the price. It's like, okay, you do realize, even if you had a four thousand dollar item in that room that you're recording in, that room sucks, you know. And that's most people's rooms. You know, what I mean, you, you get reverberation off the walls, all that stuff. And once you start hearing that stuff, you can't unhear it, right? And that's what a sound engineer picks up on, right? Once you hear something, you can't unhear it. Like when I did that uh, video, the uh, drop C one. Like I can hear the difference between the three guitars. Is it massive? No, but I hear it, and because my ears hone in what I want, what I want, like the, my extended range seven string guitar makes that baritone sound. You simply can't down tune a shorter scale length guitar and get that. Now, there's no amount of EQing that'll give you that. The baritone is a baritone. Period. Uh, the Gibson scale guitars sound like Gibson scale guitars all the time. You might have a hard time picking it out in a mix, sure, because there's you know variations of. But once you hear it, you know, in, in an isolated uh, track or whatever, you're, you're like, do I like this? And then maybe, you, you know, just have the drums there or the bass there. And then I kind of like the way this works better. And then the thing is, is something that you might not pick up on, uh, but the short scaled length guitars might be better down tuned to get a heavier guitar sound. Um, because it, 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 your, your guitars really depend on clarity the veracity of the sound of the guitar and then the most important to your heavy guitar sound is how clear your bass is and how powerful your bass is so your bass you're you're better off to record with a four hundred dollar guitar and a four thousand dollar bass than the other way around and as a guy who's a guitar player trust me i'm telling you this from my little experience of having a cheap bass that you know it does the bass thing but it's more like just kind of like a drone in the background, you know, it's because it's a very, very cheap bass. It doesn't have the punch for the clarity. There's not the right tension on the strings to get that low B to really just, you know, control, control the punchiness, right? So does it sound good? It sounds good. That's not the problem. The problem is not does it sound good, but does it sound optimal? And that's where uh, I'm making the case for, you know, get your ideas down on your idea machines, whatever they are, you know, don't. You know, don't go too crazy with the home recording studio uh, until you visit a studio and see what it takes to get that extra, you know. And then once you know, okay, well, this is what I want to get. Can I get it on the cheaper? You know, you know what I mean? Rather than trying to buy your way to the studio, what you do is you go get the experience, which, you know, like, for example, the drum kit, uh, when I get my drum kit, which I'm, you know, Pretty soon, I don't know if I'll get it this month, but it's either going to be this month or next month, depending on a few things, you know, money, of course, um, getting my debt down so I can, you know, rack it up again. Uh, but the drum kit, I'm looking at like cheap drum kits, and then I'm looking at intermediate drum kits, and then I'm looking at the drum kit that once I get that, that's it. You know, I don't need to get another drum kit after that. You know, I don't need to upgrade from that. And I've learned that through watching many other drummers buy the cheap thing first then buy the intermediate thing next and then go out and buy the expensive thing eventually you know what i mean i'll just buy the cheap drum throne and then you buy the second cheap drum throne when the first one breaks then you buy the third one and then you buy the fourth one and then you go out and you buy an intermediate one it lasts a little bit longer it does okay but it's never perfect uh but then you then you, you say screw it you go but you've now spent three good ones if you would have just spent that money in the first place you know what I mean? So I'm not saying go out and spend, you know, spare no expense. Buy tool to the job is, is always what I'm trying to tell people. Because I have spent a lot of money on guitars and stuff like that. And other instruments over the years that, you know, like I, I remember I kept telling myself, you know, uh, back in early 2000s. Oh, Gibson, SG, I would love to have an SG-61 reissue. Not the standard reissues that they have now, but the actual 61 reissue like I have. 